Now, next experiment is to verify Archimedes' principle. Yes? Excuse me, ma'am. May yes. I ask you one question? Yes. Ma'am, what is Archimedes' principle? Archimedes' principle is that whenever a solid object, like we have taken this, whenever this, any solid object is immersed, is dipped in a fluid, it suffers a loss in weight, and this loss in weight is equal to the weight of the liquid it displaces, or the weight of the liquid displaced. Why there is a weight of loss when a solid body is immersed in water? See, when a solid object is immersed in a liquid, not only in water, it can be any fluid, but it can be a liquid also. So if a solid object is immersed in a liquid, it suffers a loss in weight, I said, because the liquid exerts an upward force on the object, so there's a decrease in the in the weight of the object. So there's a loss in the weight of the object. Or we can say in other words also that an object weigh less than it is put in a liquid. Ma'am, I have a doubt. Yes. Ma'am, is there a name for this upward force? Yes, this upward force is called buoyant force. It is called buoyant force. question. Yes. Ma'am, is the buoyant force uh, depends on something or is it constant? Uh, no, it is not. It's not constant as such. It is just a phenomena that is called buoyancy. Buoyant force depends on two factors. One is volume of the solid object which is immersed in the liquid and second is the density of the liquid. If the object is partly immersed, burn force will be less. If the object is completely immersed, then the burn force will become maximum. So it depends upon the volume. It increases with the volume. As the volume of the subject of, of the object increases, burn force increases. And it also depends upon the density of the liquid. As the density of the liquid increases, burn force increases. That is why the burn force in case of sea water is more as compared to fresh water because the density of sea water is more. So it depends upon these two factors. One is volume of the object, second is the density of the liquid. Anything else or we shall begin with the experiment. Anything you want to know? This is a spring balance which is required. Then we have this solid object. It can be anything. You can take a piece of stone also. You can take a bob also. Okay. Then we have this can. It is called an overflow can. Then we have this measuring cylinder. So whatever water will be displaced will be collected in this measuring cylinder. This is an iron stand to set up the apparatus. We'll put the iron stand here. Now we'll take a stand and we'll keep this overflow can on the stand. Then we'll take this spring balance and we'll tie this weight to the spring balance with the help of a thread. So here we have spring balance attached with the weight. So we'll see the height of this when it is to be immersed in this can. After adjusting the height, we'll remove the string balance and we'll 
fill water in this can. We need another beaker also to keep it here. One more beaker. So we'll keep this beaker here because water is to be filled in this overflow can and we'll keep on filling it till water starts coming out from this nozzle. When water will stop coming out from the nozzle, then the apparatus is ready to take the observations. So we'll keep on filling it till water starts coming out from this nozzle. When it stops coming out from the nozzle, now the apparatus is ready for the observations. Now we'll take this measuring cylinder, we'll clean it and it should be dried because we have to take readings in this. Now it should be placed below this nozzle in such a manner that water should fall in the measuring cylinder because if water drops will stick to the walls of the container, then the reading will be affected. We have to collect the amount of water, we have to record the observation that is the amount of water which will be collected in the, in the measuring cylinder. Now, we will find out first the weight of this object in air. So, we will suspend it here and we will record, we will see how much is this object, yes, weighing in air, okay. So, we will take the observations here. that is weight of the object, weight of the object in air. So, let us see, one of you come and read how much is its weight in air. 65. Not around, we have to find an accurate reading. It is 60 or 65? 65. Okay. So, we will write down here, weight of the object in air is 65 grams. Now we will immerse it in the can and then we will again find out its weight. So, I will note down here that is weight of object in liquid. So, before we put it, we will keep the measuring cylinder here because we have to collect the water which will be displaced when this object is immersed. Okay. Now, you have seen the moment I have put this inside the overflow can, water has started coming out from the nozzle. So, this is the amount of water which is displaced and now we will take down the reading that is the weight of the object in water, water. in liquid. Okay, so, what is its weight? Come and read it. One of you can come and read it. 50 grams. 50 grams? Okay. So, weight of the object in liquid is? is 50 grams. So, you have seen that there is a loss in the weight of the object when it was dipped in the liquid. So, this loss in weight is due to the buoyant force. This is due to the buoyant force. So, let us see how much is the loss in weight. So, loss in weight is the difference in the two readings that is weight of the object in air, that is weight of the object in air minus weight of the object in liquid. So, this comes out to be 65 minus 50, that is 15 grams. Now, according to Archimedes principle, this loss in weight is equal to 
weight of water displaced so now we'll see that reading and then we'll write down here how much is the weight of water displaced that we have collected in the measuring cylinder so weight of water displaced is equal to so one of you come and take this reading also is this also 15 yes ma'am everybody can see it yes ma'am yes, ma yes so we have seen that weight of water displaced is also coming out to be 15 grams so this is what was the aim of our experiment that is whenever an object is dipped in a liquid it suffers a loss in weight due to buoyant force which is equal to the weight of liquid or weight of water displaced so thus we have proved that loss in weight thus loss in weight loss in weight is equal to weight of weight of liquid weight of liquid displaced so this is this is the experiment so this was the experiment which we were to prove it now this says that archimedes principle hold true that loss in weight is equal to weight of the liquid displaced now there are applications of archimedes principle that is we can use this principle let us see where can we use it can anybody tell me where can we use this archimedes principle design the submarine and ships very good so for designing the submarines and ships this principle is used does it have any other application no nobody knows okay so i'll tell you it is also used to determine the relative density of the sub of the objects this archimedes principle can also be used to determine the relative density of the of the objects now we can also find out the density of a substance with this same apparatus that is with a measuring cylinder and with the spring balance that is with the weight of the object in air and with the weight of the water displaced we can also calculate the density of the solid object which we have used it so that can be your next experiment to determine the density of the object